Tourism is a mammoth part of the world's economy, but the economy's sharp downturn and the deadly violence in the Mid Middle East have hampered travel and tourism. Out of fear and tight pocketbooks, more and more people are staying closer to home. Just what is the state of tourism around the world, the nation, the state, and Orange County? That's the focus of today's World Press. Welcome back to World Press. Tourism is the world's number one employer. How is the depressed economy affecting the state of travel in the world, the nation, state, and Orange County, one of the nation's top uh, destinations for travelers? Joining me now are some of the nation's greatest experts on tourism. They are Steve Bone, Chairman of the Orange County Tourism Council, and Don Anderson, Director of the College of Communications, Entertainment, and Tourism Center at Cal State Fullerton, and an internationally recognized expert on tourism and hospitality. Let's start with Don Anderson today. What really is entertainment and tourism and its role in community development, Don? Well, Tony, I feel really pleased to be here with you today. And as you know, entertainment and tourism is the world's largest industry. Almost three quarters of a trillion dollars is spent not only for visitors traveling within their own country, but also traveling overseas and internationally. But tourism is a multifaceted industry. Uh, there's some technical definitions, but in a lot of cases, visitors come to a destination for either business or leisure, and they use various uh, and do various activities, like going to attractions, events, uh, spending time, uh, meetings and conferences, uh, and also could be doing various uh, adventure and recreational activities. Again, when they do that, then they normally would need hospitality services, staying in hotels, restaurants, and then traveling to that destination as well. So tourism sometimes is very difficult to understand because of that multifaceted and fragmented point of view. But wherever a visitor goes, really that is part of the visitor industry. And uh, we're real fortunate here in this state of California and in Orange County that we realized a number of years ago that's something that we could really have an advantage in bringing more visitors here. And with the help of the Orange County Tourism Council, we've established a center here at Cal State Fullerton in which you are now the first director of this um, new center. And what's going to go on with that center? What is its aims and its goals and its mission? Well, it's a privilege for me to be here. I feel real fortunate in being able to lead this uh, center along with the uh, others within the uh, College of Communications. Its key role is to really become the most nationally recognized resource center for tourism and entertainment when it comes to education, when it comes to professional development, research and advocacy and why tourism would be important to a, to a community and to a, a destination. And you're certainly well qualified for this job. Why don't you tell us where you came from? Well, I'm uh, from Purdue University and have spent uh, 10 years there, but my academic life has been 20 years, but prior to that within the industry itself, worked as a hotel general manager. I had an opportunity of running a convention and visitor bureau. And uh, so I tried to bring both the practical side and the theoretical side. And with, uh, with that background, uh, I'm hoping that I can go forward and work with others to really make this center those preeminent uh, research and education center in, in our country. Good. Welcome to being a Titan now. Let's Thank turn you. to Steve Bone. Uh, you've worn a number of hats in, in tourism, uh, in the tourism business. You've been a developer at uh, certainly one of the major developments, the Hyatt and other hotels, and, and uh, you've been very successful at it. And now you're president of uh, the Huntington Beach um, Marketing and Tourism Bureau and uh, a voluntary chairman of the Orange County Visitors uh, uh, Council. Um, what is the important value of tourism to California and Orange County in particular? Well, Tourism California is the second largest industry in California behind agriculture. In Orange County, it's a seven billion dollar industry with wow. over 40,000 employees. There are about 500 uh, hotels in Orange County employing uh, just in those hotels about 55 uh, about 55,000 rooms. That's part of that 40,000, over 40,000 employees. So it makes a great deal of difference within the economy to, to support tourism. The other part of tourism that's interesting 
it's just not about the hotels. Half of the visitors actually stay with friends and family. Hmm. So those counts of those hotels only represent half of the stays of the visitors in Orange County. Interesting. And what about these um, tourism sites, and, and there's certainly a lot of them in Orange County and in, in Southern California, which you deal with, uh, has attendance been up? Has the, the economy um, been a real uh, blow to these industries? It was uh, quite a concern in 2008 and 9. I think we all went into the emergency room, and then 2009 <laughs> and 10 we went into ICU, and, and uh, we're, we're walking out of the hospital now. We're, 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 we're just fine. Occupancies are up. People are thinking about uh, rate now. Uh, the visitor counts are up, so uh, we're, we're very optimistic. We're blessed in Southern California to be surrounded by over 20 million people who are looking for recreation, looking for a place to visit. Um, so even when gas prices go up, uh, instead of getting on that plane to Hawaii and paying that price, a lot of people are staying right here and having a great time in this unbelievable Sounds climate. like a good commercial, doesn't it? <laughs> I hope uh, so. <laughs> um, I've been to some of your uh, meetings of the, of the council. I've been very impressed on some of the issues you've been tackling. And uh, tell us a little bit about what some of the major concerns you have and some of the issues that the uh, Orange County uh, Tourism Council is dealing with right now. Well, it's, it's interesting. The Orange County Tourism Council actually owns uh, the rights to the OC. Hmm. So when you go to our website, visittheoc.com, it's interesting. Who, who has it? It's actually the Orange County Tourism Council. Hmm. It may be a less than perfect uh, soap opera that gave us that, but uh, we're still proud to, uh, to own it. Um, we, uh, we concentrate in advocacy, uh, education, and marketing. But one of the projects that I'm really proud of right now is cultural and heritage tourism. Uh, Bonnie Hall, who was the founding executive director of Arts Orange County, uh, came to us about a year and a half, two years ago, and said, gee, you know what? It would be great if we could get the information on the culture and history of Orange County on our website. Now, to do that is very ambitious because print limited the number of stories to talk about. Now digitally we have the long tail, and that long tail will allow us to go back and tell the wonderful, wonderful stories of Orange County. I laugh when I sometimes uh, talk about the culture of Huntington Beach. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good response, appropriate ris response. Yeah. It's more than just uh, surfers, and there's a great surfing culture that Orange County has exported to the world. But the Indians were camping on the Bolsa Chica Mesa 4,000 years before the pyramids were built. Hmm. So there's a great culture to tell about Orange County and we're proud to tell it. So we're going to assemble that information, create a new website later this year uh, that allow you to search uh, across Orange County for whatever you want to do. Good. And I can't uh, let you go that to t asking you about Disney and its, in, and its power in tourism in Orange County. Um, how powerful is the Disney name here? We are absolutely blessed to have Disney here. Um, it, is, um, it is a game changer. It moves the needle. Um, we have three or four things that we love to brag about. Uh, we love to brag about the weather. We love to brag about the beach. We love to brag about shopping. And we love Disney. Good. <laughs> Good. And you're, you must be happy to be here from uh, Purdue. And it's not snowing outside? And Absolutely. I mean, uh, I feel every day I'm on vacation here, so I can't blame visitors wanting to come to California, and especially the OC. And let's face it, California OC are very strong brands out there. There's a major pull of visitors coming uh, to this part of the world, and we can show it off. And, and we should have all that support and background, not only uh, through the industry and looking after visitors, but also from an educational and, and, um, and advocacy point of view as well. And when we talk about advocacy and education, uh, the center is also is going to be involved um, in research. And what kind of issues, what kind of topics do you think you'll be dealing with? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, certainly we're going to talk very closely to our partners in the visitor industry and try and satisfy their needs. 
but rest assured it's going to be very visitor oriented. We really need to get to know our visitors, uh, certainly what they want to do here, and make sure that we're giving them the best visitor experience they can ever have. Because at the end of the day, it's all about that visitor coming back and telling others of, the, of that experience. And, uh, and certainly the OC can stand tall on what it's done so far. We just hope to improve it and make it even better. Well, thank you for joining us today. And coming up next on our Focus on Tourism, we'll see how the economy is affecting where people travel. Cal State Fullerton student and World Press correspondent Melanie Polito will have that report. We'll be right back. To be a good father is the most important job in a man's life. But it doesn't have to be hard. Play catch. Go to a park or visit a zoo. Help your child with their homework. Sit down together for dinner. Ask them how their day was. Things get busy, and sometimes we all fall short. But the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Known as the entertainment capital of Los Angeles, Universal Studios Hollywood has always had its share of tourists, until now. Due to the economy, Los Angeles residents find themselves coming to Universal Studios, but more so coming to City Walk to enjoy time with their families. Universal City Walk is a three-block stretch of entertainment, dining, and particularly a shopping promenade. With over 30 great places to eat that stretch from a range of cultural dining from all over the world, City Walk leaves goers with endless options. Along with other attractions, City Walk has iFly, which offers indoor skydiving for ages 3 to the oldest skydiver that has been 103. iFly always grabs goers' attention by letting every diver be seen in action to the public. It's close by and it's pretty fun for everybody. Like, I can come here with my friends and we can still have a good time without having to blow like a bunch of money on everything. Since City Walk is free to roam and offers special prices on attractions that are changed daily, this gives fun for the entire family at reasonable costs. In the center square of City Walk, families can enjoy a live screen that always has entertainment, an IMAX cinema to catch the latest flick, and of course, the infamous Hard Rock Cafe guitar. Although not like a real vacation, parents feel the need to take their children somewhere enjoyable. The last time I took my family on a, on a vacation, was four years ago. The economy is so bad right now and has not really gotten better. Mm, even thought it's not like a real vacation. I have to bring my kids somewhere. Even with their buy a day, get a year free deal at Universal Studios, business still feels a little cut short. Although Universal City Walk is definitely filling the crowds, Universal Studios is not. With lack of admission, with all their discounts for 2011, the recession is definitely taking a hold on them. According to Gail Chambers of Sunny Hill Travel Agency in Fullerton, California, things are looking positive for 2011. Chambers stated, although the past two years have been extremely slow, 2011 has already shown much improvement with many people planning trips in advance. People are wanting to go back to Europe and make lengthy trips. I know this, the need is going to grow. Reporting for World Press, I'm Melanie Polito. Thank you, Melanie, for that well-informed piece. Coming up next, I will be joined by three Cal State Fullerton students who have researched the dangers of tourism, how the economy has affected tourism, and where you can find the best travel deals. We'll be right back. I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Johannes Rose! I bring you arts enriched raisin blums, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to World Press. Joining me now are Hannah Dellinger, Brianne Kinder, and Sarah Hodges. 
Each has been looking into various aspects of travel and tourism from danger to bargains. First, Brienne, give me an overall uh, uh, picture of international tourism right now. Well, there's been a, a decrease in tourism and it's affected the economy as a whole because due to the recession, there has been um, a lack of demand for traveling as people are getting their houses foreclosed and traveling is not a priority right now for many of our American citizens. Food is right now, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> and which countries are being most effective? Egypt and Lebanon, Spain, Fiji, the Bahamas and the Philippines. These are all, um, tourism is very vital for many of these countries and they've taken a hit due to the recession. And when, we, when you talk about um, the hit and um, it's the value of these economies, what are you talking about, basically? Well, jobs have decreased. Um, tourism employs many jobs right now. Uh, airlines, cruise ships, um, amusement parks, theaters, resorts, they have all taken a major hit from this decrease in tourism, and it's all result from the recession. And one of the, you know, uh, Steve Bone was here earlier today and talked about, uh, you know, why pay, you know, all the, this high gas prices, just stay at home and uh, enjoy Orange County. Um, fuel has been a tremendous impact on international tourism, correct? Correct. Um, I, some people are, have been asking if airlines will, you know, make deals for people to, to increase the tourism rates, but I don't see that happening anytime soon with the oil, um, the gas prices are rising and they're not going down anytime soon. So if anything, airlines will be rising their prices rather than lowering them. And tourism, unfortunately, will probably continue to decrease. And I've been looking at the airline flights to uh, Europe this summer, and uh, they have this now fuel tax, which is about $800. And I see uh, people are paying about $1, 800 to $1,000 more for travel abroad. So not very good for uh, international uh, travel and for these countries that uh, used to be great destinations like Spain. It's unfortunate. And um, let's turn to Hannah right now and there are many safety concerns about traveling uh, internationally or even nationally and what are some of the countries that are the most dangerous to travel to right now? Well the State Department has issued a list of 32 different countries um, which have permanent dangers or instability for uh, American citizens to travel to. Um, at the top of the list right now is Yemen um, for the political uprising, obviously, that's going on right, right now there. Um, another is Cote d'Ivoire uh, because of the instability after their 2010 election. And so in addition to those 32 countries, there's eight um, kind of temporary warnings. Um, and the most recent was for New Zealand for the devastating earthquake that they had in Christchurch. Very good. And what can travelers do to ensure a safe trip abroad if they're going abroad? Oh, well, the main thing um, is when you're walking around town as a tourist, not to make yourself look too affluent or rich. Otherwise, you will be a target for pickpocketers. Um, another is always take um, traveler's checks and a couple major credit cards so that if your cash is stolen, uh, you won't be stranded without any funding. Um, also, the State Department recommends take a photocopy of your passport photo as well as the information page so you can easily get a new passport if you, it's lost or stolen. And what about students? Um, they're, they're traveling, particularly to Mexico these days, which is, uh, seems to be a very dangerous place to go. How can students protect themselves um, in traveling? Uh, well, the main thing for students, um, spring break is coming up really soon. Um, so students are especially at risk um, because a lot of them do get uh, intoxicated while on vacation. So that makes them a big target for not only pickpocketing and robbery, but also sexual assaults. Um, and you're in, a, in an unfamiliar place, so you really have to keep your wits about you while you're out there. And then um, the State Department has a program called um, the Safe Travelers Enrollment Program. So you can give them your information so they easily, if your family has some kind of emergency, they can contact you while you're abroad. Oh, very good. And uh, I don't think some students realize that uh, drunkenness, particularly in some of the European countries, is very frowned upon. It is not a cultural thing. And you end up in jail uh, for a long time. And uh, especially drugs, if, you have, if you're with alcohol and drugs, you're even in worse shape. Um, and where's, where are students going to go this vacation break? What's, What's the destination? Vegas. Have you heard anything? Las Vegas? Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> <Close>. <laughs> and Mexico, no? 
Um, well, a lot of my friends probably aren't going to go to places like that because of all the dangers and the cost as well. Good. Well, thank you for that report. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to, to uh, travel bargains with uh, uh, Sarah's here today. And due to the economy in the U.S., where are people going to find affordable travel? Um, there's a lot of different websites people can go to find good deals on traveling, hotel stays, um, cars. Um, Priceline Negotiators is a big one where you can actually name your own price and Priceline will then come at you and say whether they agree with your price or deny it. Um, there's Expedia, um, Allegiant Airlines is offering tickets from Long Beach to Vegas for $10 one way, $29 the way back. So there are definitely some discounts going on for travelers. Okay, good. And where do people from other countries shop for travel? Um, from other countries, is a lot the same. They're, they have their Expedia or their CheapTickets.com, but it would be .co.uk, for instance. So pretty much the same way over the web. What, what do you use? Um, personally, I use Allegiant Airlines. Um, I use Priceline because you can bid on tickets and hotels, and you can basically name your own price, which is amazing because if you don't want to spend you know, a certain amount of money, you don't have to, and they'll tell you before they charge your card whether you're going to get the deal or not. The downside with Priceline is there's up to two layovers, and you don't always get a layover, but there's up to two. Not only that, you don't get to choose the time that you leave. So if you have something to do that day, you basically have to keep your day completely open to travel and travel back. Oh, some, good, some good information. What tourism destinations give the best deal for your money right now? Um, so I would say in the States right now, Atlanta, Georgia has really good deals for entertainment, for hotel stays. Um, out of the country, internationally, Argentina, you're going to want to look for places where your dollar will go a lot more. So places like Argentina, Vietnam, where they offer entertainment, fun, food, drinks for a lot cheaper. And what about cruises? Is that a, is Cru it still too expensive? Cruises are expensive. They're still, they're still good, but I would say definitely take your money somewhere where you can get a lot more. So okay. you can get yeah. massages for cheap, facials for cheap. Oh, that's good. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you suggested Las Vegas, so you can yeah, definitely get more money Las for Vegas. your buck. Uh, thank you, Brianne and Sarah and Hannah, and uh, for sharing your research with us here on World Press. And coming up next, a World Press correspondent uh, Jessica Chapula uh, went to some of these Southlands tourist hotspots to find out why people love to visit California. Stay tuned. Hey, how's it going? Sir, are you okay? What? Oh, this? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool. Really. Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. From Hollywood to the beaches, there are many attractions that tourists from all over the world want to see when they come to Southern California. World Press correspondent Jessica Chapula set out on a tourist-type adventure that will leave us all with a thirst to explore our local attractions. The City of Angels, as many will call it, it's the glitz and glams of Hollywood. After a hard recession, Los Angeles has seen an increase in tourism with 25.7 million tourists in 2010. But what makes Los Angeles such a great city to visit? Hollywood. I'm standing here in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where for many tourists this is their first attraction and a step closer to their favorite celebrities. The Hollywood Walk of Fame, located on Hollywood Boulevard, attracts many visitors every year to take a picture next to the star of their favorite celebrities. Hollywood doesn't only offer a Walk of Fame, but also offers many attractions, like the Chinese theater, shopping, and of course, star maps and Hollywood tours. Uh, we just happen to, you know, come around, see the town, uh, see a lot of the things they have here. But, you know, for, all, for the most part, we enjoy seeing the celebrity homes. Uh, I took a picture in front of Michael Jackson's mansion, the one he got. Uh, yeah, it's too bad, but I mean, I had a good time there. <laughs> but for the most part, we en we're enjoying ourselves. Los Angeles isn't only about Hollywood, but also offers different cultures, like Olvera Street, 
where visitors can enjoy the Mexican culture or Chinatown, located a few blocks away from the Union Station. With so many sights to see, Los Angeles also offers the must-needed relaxation at the beach. Venice Beach holds a whole different culture, with must-needed shopping and a place to eat. People come to Venice to enjoy the atmosphere, take a ride down the beach, and enjoy some skateboarding. With so many sights to see, it's no wonder Los Angeles has recovered from the tourism downturn. If the recession is keeping it hard to travel abroad or out of state, then come on in to Los Angeles to see what it has to offer. You'll never know what you get in your own backyard. This is Jessica Chapula reporting for World Press. Thank you, Jessica, for a story that showcases much of what is very attractive to Southern California visitors. That's all the time we have today on this edition of World Press. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Tony Fellow, Chair of the Department of Communications at California State University Fullerton. We'll see you on another edition of World Press.